In today's episode, I'll explain how I went from an idea in my head to an actual electronic prototype in one weekend with the help of artificial intelligence. I'll explain it all right here at Chuck Hollabuck's Electronic Products. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. This video is also brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. My brain is always working, even when I'm out taking a walk. And I'm constantly coming up with ideas for little electronic projects or products that I may be able to make. And the problem is I have too many ideas and not enough time. So what I was looking for is help. Someone could help me maybe write some code, someone could do with electronics. It's hard to find because people are busy. They don't have the time or it's gonna cost you a lot. So I had an idea for a goalie counter, actually a save percentage counter that a goalie parent can have sitting in the stands. You click a button when a shot is taken, you click another button when a goal goes in and it'll automatically calculate the save percentage. Now I don't even know if it's worth doing, but I wanted to see if I can make it work. But I didn't have time to write all the code, design the circuit. Then I started experimenting with AI or chat GPT. So I stopped for a minute, I typed into chat GPT on my phone, told it what I wanted, and it created a code and described the circuitries. And then if I like what I see, I can run it in a simulator and see if the idea is even worth doing. And I can do all this in a couple hours. Here's a snapshot of what I asked it. I tried to be specific, Arduino, 2x16 LCD, two momentary switches, and I tried to explain the algorithm. From that, it described the connection so I could build this on a breadboard or in the simulator. And then it wrote the code for the Arduino with the, all the setup for the connection to the LCD, the switches, and then the algorithm to calculate the save percentage. And then it even gave me an explanation of that code to help me understand it. And then I could just copy that code and paste it into the simulator. For the simulator, I went to Tinkercad circuits. I use this all the time, and from there, I could actually build the circuit based on the connections that it described. And then I could go into the code, and I could actually copy and paste that code that ChatGPT wrote right into Tinkercad circuits here. And then I clicked Start Simulation, and it was running right there in the simulator. But it said Goals and Shots, which was taking up too much space. So I went back to ChatGPT and I said, can you change goals to G and shots to SH on the LCD? And it rewrote the code to do just that so I could copy that code and paste it in the simulator. So then I took that code, pasted it in, ran the simulation, and now I have G and SH. That was so easy. Now when I press the button here, it's going to show the shot. So I press it 10 times for 10 shots. But then the 11th one is a goal. So I'll click that, and now it's showing the save percentage of 900, which is correct. Now I could have stopped right there, because in less than two hours, I had come up with an idea, ChatGPT had written the code, had described the circuitry, I took that and simulated it, and proved the whole concept worked. But I wanted to go further. So I built it on actual hardware. And here it is on a 3D printed base with an actual Arduino and a breadboard, and it's working just like it was in the simulator. I click on the shot count, it goes up to 10, then I'll click on goal, and it should show the 900, and there it is. It's all working just like it was in the simulator. Once I validated that the chat GPT software was working, and that the hardware connections were all correct, I could take it to the next step. Now you don't need this whole module in order to run it. I only need the microcontroller and a few extra components. In fact, that's what I did. I validated it. I took this chip right out of the module. I have a ceramic resonator with built-in capacitors instead of the crystal and capacitors that's on the module, and then a 10K pull-up to the M-Clear pin. That's really it, plus power and ground. So I used this circuit and built the whole thing right here on a breadboard. Now I knew exactly how I wanted my design to work. So now I could lay out a circuit board to match this. Now fortunately, behind me I have all the tools to make the electronics. I have a computer to design the schematic and also the circuit board. I have a PCB mill to create the circuit board, at least the first prototypes, which I may eventually send it off and get professional boards, but I can mill them right there. And then I have a solder station back here so I can solder the board together with all the components, many components right here in the cabinets in the back, and then I have a 3D printer to print the case. Now if you use ChatGPT and you come up with an idea and you don't have all these tools, don't worry. PCBWay.com has you covered. PCBWay.com offers design services. They'll do the schematic, they'll do the board layout, and from there you can have them make the boards. In fact, you could do 10 pieces for 5 bucks plus shipping. 
You want it assembled? They offer that service too, low-cost assembly services. You need CNC machining or 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication or injection molding? They offer all that as well. So if you have an idea for an electronic product, check out PCBWay.com to make it real. Here's a two-color picture of my final board layout. It's really a single-sided board with silk screen. Single-sided board is really easy to mill, and I can do jumpers for anything that needs to go across the top. This was my original board. I was planning a different battery setup, but I made the board the same size as the LCD so they could stack together. And then here's the final layout once everything was assembled. But before this, I had to create the case. So I went into Tinkercad again, and I found an LCD module. I found a battery that I could use, and then I worked from an existing design that I found and modified and fit it together so I knew how everything would work. So this is what the case will look like when it's done. So I can export this file and then 3D print it so I've got my case. Well, there's always room for improvement, but this is the first shot. Everything fit pretty nice. I'm learning from this how to make it better. I put the back cover on and it's working. Now it's actually easier to see than it shows here on the camera, but I'm actually going to backlight the LCD to make it brighter. So that's an improvement that's coming in the next generation. Okay, I couldn't wait. Here it is with the backlighting enabled. That is much easier to read, but it's still a first prototype. And there it is, the first working prototype. Now I can improve it a lot, but from going for a walk, coming up with an idea, to actually having this in my hand, I did it in a weekend. And ChatGPT, or AI, helped make it all possible because it took a big chunk of time out of it by listening to what I asked for, giving me working code, and a description of the circuitry that allowed me to take the next step to prototype, to prototype, to circuit board, to 3D print, solder together, and finished product. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.